I think there's strength in numbers. Look, I'm, I'm a free enterprise competition guy. Uh, I don't think it hurts. And I think by the end of April, we'll probably have a nominee. I think that's healthy. Alongside Miranda Kahn here on the anchor desk, J.D. Hayworth taking note of former House Speaker and 2012 presidential candidate Newt Gingrich saying the more the merrier as so many GOP candidates are entering this race for the Oval Office in 2016. Yeah, as of right now, J.D., 10 candidates have officially announced, but we could see, are you ready for this, as many as 20 by the time it's all done. However, with so many choices, Many are questioning whether or not a crowded field will help or hurt the Republicans. Joining us now, the president of Shirley and Bannister Public Affairs, Craig Shirley. Craig is also the author of a great read. I am loving this book as I read it right now. Rendezvous with Destiny, Ronald Reagan and the Campaign that Changed America. Craig, I'm calling it the Baskin Robbins Syndrome. Maybe <laughs> not 31 flavors, but a whole bunch of people who want to be president. Does that help or hurt the Republican Party? Well, let me say first, is better than Ben and Jerry's. Uh, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I think it helps. I agree with Newt. I think that uh, the, that we we believe if, if conservatives believe in believe in the unfettered free flow of ideas, and that competition brings out the uh, best in people. But you know, this is not really a recent, uh, a new phenomenon. You know, we've had. Back in 1968, for instance, Richard Nixon was a nominee, but Romney, Rockefeller, uh, Dewey Bartlett, uh, 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 there, were, there was probably maybe as many as 10, 15 contenders, uh, all of them serious too, senators, congressmen, governors, for the Republican nomination in 1968. So it's not a, 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 a new phenomenon. Of course, we had, you know, four years ago, uh, a, a healthy field. Uh, the year John McCain ran, uh, it was a healthy field. The year Ronald Reagan was nominated, 1980. You had in there two presidents, Reagan and Bush. You had Senate Majority Leader Howard Baker, two Senate Majority Leaders, including Bob Dole, uh, former governor of Texas. And then rounding out the field were John Anderson and uh, Phil Crane, both of them intellectually interesting men. So it's not uh, a, a new phenomenon to have a big crowded field, although this is more bigger and more crowded than it has been in the past. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask you, Craig, if you've ever remember a time where it's been quite this large. Now, Fox, as we know, has limited its debate to only 10 candidates. So could that hurt some candidates? You know, and Miranda, I've been thinking a lot about this. I, I think that if they haven't already, the second, so-called second-tier candidates ought to band together and produce their own debate. I guarantee you it would get just as much attention as the first tier, and in fact, might actually get the uh, uh, get more attention simply because of kind of a, a, a sympathy factor, if you will, or a curiosity or something like that. But I think that uh, the second-tier candidates instead of griping about not being in the first tier, ought to put together their own debate. Well, uh, there are a whole bunch of people who plan to run. And, and I think one of the challenges is just simple, simply this one. What will it take for someone to distinguish themselves from everybody else in this, in this uh, primary season? It's a number of things. You know, people take their vote for president very, very seriously, and they take their vote for the primary uh, candidates very, very seriously. I think it's going to be not only the person who's, uh, who's the, the most credible conservative, but that person who can demonstrate to enough voters that they can see him in their mind's eye as being an acceptable alternative to the current president or acceptable replacement or acceptable follow-on to the current president of the United States. And that's really what it's about, is, is that uh, it's about philosophy, ideology, but it's also about character. And, uh, and so it's going to be, uh, this is going to be a fascinating uh, contest, that's for sure, because it's, I think that 2016 is one of those elections like 1980 uh, where George Wills told me, as I wrote in uh, Rendezvous with Destiny, he considered the election to be a national emergency in that Carter was such a bad president uh, is that the, the country was in, was in danger. And I think that there are, there's, a, there's a good case to be made by a lot of people that the country is once again in danger. I want to ask, wanna ask we haven't heard if uh, Chris Christie or not, whether or not he's officially going to announce his run. Do you think he will? Yeah, I think he will. Uh, Miranda, uh, and here's why, is, is that for the reasons that we have been talking about right here is that the nomination is wide open. And a lot of people are looking not for the short-term knockout strategy, but the kind of the long-term 
a war of attrition strategy so that they get sufficient delegates. We might see, for the first time since 1976, a brokered convention uh, where you have enough candidates and you have, and wouldn't that be exciting, huh? you know, for everybody, uh, but you have enough candidates who do, draw enough delegate strength that nobody goes to the convention in Cleveland with enough delegates for a first ballot nomination. Wow, I think that'd be wow. Not a, a brokered convention. Craig, it sounds to me as if you've got a book ready to go, or, or maybe one for the future. At any rate, the, the book we were talking about a little bit earlier dealt with 1980, Rendezvous with Destiny, Ronald Reagan, and the Campaign That Changed America by Craig Shirley. And Newsmax Prime returns right after this.